So we all know that uh, General Wesley Clark predicted, because after 9-11, I'm going to show you that video, that the United States already had plans to go into Libya, to go into Syria, to go into Iraq, to go into Iran, to go into the Sudan, to go into Yemen. They already, and we've done all those, and now the final one is Iran, and we're getting close, and Afghanistan. But listen to this. Here, he's going to talk about what the actual purpose of the U.S. military was. Now, this is a general mm -hmm. in the U.S. military, and watch how it even hit him. He was ignorant to it, but he then got uh, his he, he got informed. Listen to it. Here he goes. He oh. said, but one thing we did learn, he said, we... So this is him uh, having a conversation with Wolfowitz. The who, author of the Wolfowitz Doctrine, Doctrine, later recalled the Bush, renamed the Bush yeah, Doctrine. Right. Which was really which great is it, those guys those guys who did the project for the new American century, which is the United States is going to wipe out all the countries. And well, he's going to tell you what it is. Learned that we can use our military in the region, in the Middle East, and the Soviets won't stop us. So that's what they learned from the first Iraq war. All the right lessons that we can the United States can use our military in the Middle East and the Soviets won't try to stop us. He said, and we've got about five or 10 years to clean up those old Soviet client regimes, Syria, Iran, Iraq, before the next great superpower comes on to challenge us. And it was like, you know, I'm coming out of the Mojave Desert. I've been training troops. I haven't been thinking geo strategy for some time. And suddenly a guy just sort of shoves this nugget at you. Well, you remember it. It was a pretty stunning thing. You mean, the purpose of the military is to, to, to start wars and change governments. It's not to sort of deter conflict. We're going to invade countries. And, I, I, you know, my mind was spinning. And uh, <laughs> I put that aside. It was like a nugget that you hold on to. This country was taken over by a group of people with a policy coup. Wolfowitz and Cheney and Rumsfeld and... You could name a half dozen other collaborators from the Project for a New American Century. They wanted us to destabilize the Middle East, turn it upside down, make it under our control. It went back to those comments in 1991. Now, did anybody ever tell you that? Was there a national dialogue on this? Did senators and congressmen stand up and denounce this plan? Was there a full-fledged American debate on it? Absolutely not. And there still isn't. And that's why we're failing in Iraq. Because Iran and Syria know about the plan. All you have to do is read the, the, the weekly standard. <laughs> the project for a new American century. What a century so far. What a century. So these are the maniacs who had control of our government. And their big idea was to set the Middle East on fire, which is what we've done, which is why I keep saying at this show that America is the world's terrorists. To control it, they and said. The, and the people, right, before another superpower we're comes along. We're not controlling it. Of course we're not controlling it. Uh, well, all we're doing is setting the world on fire and murdering people. Like terrorists. Like, ter like terrorists do. We're the, I mean, the United States is the world's terrorists. And but they because of propaganda and because of people like Rachel Maddow and Sean Hannity and Anderson Cooper and Wolf Blitzer, they convince morons who think they're getting the news when they turn on that stuff. That's actually funded by the people who want to set the Middle East on fire. Oh, by the way, ISIS really believes in ISIS as well. Much the way if you really believe America is a force for good, mm -hmm. think of how much ISIS is loyal. They're as patriotic as you. Yeah. And that there's the game right there. And so, by the way, this. So this video's out there. You think they're going to play this video on Rachel Maddow? You think they're going to do you think Chrissy Hayes is going to play this on his show? You think Sean Hannity's going to play this? You think Jesse Waters is going to play this? No. They want you to think that the people who are being occupied are the baddies. Mm -hmm. And that the is the people doing the occupying and the slaughtering are the goodies. I don't even know how what they want me to think because They've been saying it's Hamas, Hamas, and they're still selling that. All of a sudden, they switch to now nah, they all going to have to die. Yeah, that's really abrupt from all the last few years, man. It's really abrupt to go now. Nah, it's good to kill kids now. 
So this video is out there. Why do you got to come to a pothead comedian, well, ex-pothead, ex-pothead <laughs> comedian, yeah. jagoff show to get this information? Why? Because I'm not funded by the military industrial complex. In fact, the military industrial complex have been trying to shut us down. That's what that's what they do. Yeah. I don't think people get how big it is. It's all the food, all the drugs, all the weapons, all it's not just yeah, no. military stuff. It's all the stuff. Smedley Butler is all it's in so a big many monopoly. Things. Yeah. And that's why I mean that's why if you didn't like woke, where do you think that came from? Where do you think that came from? Woke didn't the come oligarchs from oligarchs at the top the, sent that to you. Woke did not come from the ground up. Woke came from the top down, as I tried Absolutely. to explain to Cornell West as he repeats that bullshit ad nauseum if anybody by the way it was only like i never heard of the term until erica badu tweeted it once but the thing i think they're referring to what that referred to was what? believing conspiracy theories what woke woke in the original african-american sense of the yeah, word yeah, yeah. Oh, that they're yeah. that, that was the original you, but it was yeah, twisted it meant you then. didn't think yeah. we landed on the moon is what it meant no it didn't mean it was a positive thing and then it was switched to now it's like the i, I don't the, believe the right it was ever what that big of a thing at all i think it's a lie yeah. erica badu said it like i said it was corny the whole time yeah. for the record so let, let me just play this video so Here's so here's another video that is out there that was on a show called Democracy Now, which is not a tiny little show that nobody knows about. Everybody on the left, including Rachel Maddow, and everybody knows this show. And I'm sure every one of them has seen this video that I'm about to play. Government, our administration wanted to worry about Iraq, not Iran. I, I knew why, because I'd been through the Pentagon right after 9-11. About 10 days after 9-11, I went through the Pentagon and I saw Secretary Rumsfeld and, and Deputy Secretary Wolfowitz. I went downstairs just to say hello to some of the people on the joint staff who had used, used to work for me. And one of the generals called me and he said, sir, you got to come in. You got to come in and talk to me a second. I said, well, you're too busy. He said, no, no. He says, we've made the decision. We're going to war with Iraq. This was on or about the 20th of September. I said, we're going to war with Iraq. Why? He said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, I guess they don't know what else to do. So uh, I said, well, did they find some information collect connecting Saddam to Al Qaeda? He said, no, no. He says, there's nothing new that way. They just made the decision to go to war with Iraq. He said, I guess it's like we don't know what to do about terrorists, but we got a good military and we can take down governments. And um, he said, I guess if the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem has to look like a nail. So I came back to see him a few weeks later. And by that time we were bombing in Afghanistan. I said, are we still going to war with Iraq? And he said, oh, it's worse than that. He said, he reached over on his desk, he picked up a piece of paper. And he said, I just, he said, I just got this down from upstairs, meaning the Secretary of Defense office today. And he said, this is a memo that describes how we're gonna take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. I said, is it classified? He said, yes, sir. I said, <laughs> I said, well, don't show it to me. And I saw him a year or so ago and I said, you remember that? He said, sir, I didn't show you that memo. I didn't show it to you. Uh, I'm sorry, what did you say his name was? <laughs> I'm not going to give you his name. So go through the countries again? Well, starting with Iraq, then Syria and Lebanon, then Libya, then Somalia and Sudan, and then back to Iran. So I believe we hit all of them except Iran, did we not? Lebanon. Uh, uh, Iran, uh, Lebanon, Iran are, the, are left. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, my goodness. Well, we gonna, so, I guess we're going to have to check them all off. So these videos are out there. If I know about it, how does RFK Jr. not know about it? You don't want to know about it, and I don't want to know about it. I got Buffalo Wild Wings brain. How how does how does Rachel Maddow not know about it? How does Anderson Cooper not know about it? Wolf Blitzer know about it? Sean Hannity, Jesse Water, they all know this. They all know this, but they they also are willing to cheer on World War Three for a hundred thousand dollars a day, which is what Rachel Maddow gets paid. A hundred thousand dollars a day. Rachel Maddow gets paid. I bet you self-medication helps a lot because I happen to know quite a few people that work at these news 
agencies. Yeah. Most of them are drunks, and there's cokeheads, and there's, pill poppers, every kind of partying you could do. I'm not saying any of them specifically, but I just doubt to they. Cope, do, right? I doubt they sit there knowingly yeah. doing this sober. I doubt it. Yeah, I I don't. I I think they do. And uh, I I remember our friend Russ from Do Dissonance went and heckled uh, Rachel Maddow at her uh, when she was being interviewed by Ben Stiller. They were both wearing the same suit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're telling me Ben Stiller is dumber than me when he goes to Ukraine? Mm -hmm. He doesn't understand there's yes. literal Nazis there? He is dumber, yes. Actors are the stupidest people who've ever lived. Don't ever forget that. Act they're, well, they're so self-absorbed. They, they don't listen to I give it to, to Tim, Robbins. Yeah. Tim Robbins. Tim Robbins, he apologized for being Tim, an idiot. Tim Robbins apologized Great. for being an idiot and, during and I COVID. I was really impressed by that because that's an unusually smart actor. Mm -hmm. It really is. They're on purpose, stupid blanks. Even smart ones. The great Anthony Hopkins I love because he goes, well, I don't think I should be weighing in on this stuff because actors are stupid. <laughs> he knows the deal. Actors are dumb whores. I don't know how I could say it clearer. They will do whatever you give them the money. They'll, they'll have the emotion that they care about it because that's their job is mm -hmm. to be a human blank <laughs> and embody whatever it is you need them to embody and they'll do it. And the ones that go really far like your Tom Hanks's, they end up making really great propaganda for the state. Oh, yeah. And and your Sean Penns and your Ben Ooh, Stillers, yeah. I just can't believe that. It's just it's just shocking How to me. Movies, so there it is. Yeah. These videos are out there. You can't deny these videos. So now you can st go ahead and tell me how bad Hamas is and how horrible they are. Hamas does not have the arsenal of the United States military, and Hamas didn't invade seven other countries, topple their leaders, kill millions of people, displace millions more. For what? For what? For economic gain for Western corporations. That's what this is about. Decisions made by and people this, that don't do the job. This guy is at least a general, right? So he's yes, training he's a soldiers. general. He's training soldiers. And then he if you believe in politicians, you are a chess piece to them to move around in their big game. And whatever they'll do to an Arab, they'll do to you. Whatever mm -hmm. they'll do to black people, they'll do to you if you're white. Don't ever fall for that. Like, it's a lie. Whatever they do to them, they'll do to you. That's the one lesson everybody should be taking from this. Yeah, so I remember uh, I used to do a show with a comedian, and he used to say, whatever we do to people overseas, we are eventually going to do to yeah. our own people back here. Absolutely. Well, and, and it started happening in real time. They militarized the police. They used weapons of war. You ever, you ever see a cop now? They walk around. They look like they're walking around the streets of Iraq during a war. Yeah. They don't look. When I was, my dad was a cop. My grandpa was a cop. My oldest brother was a cop. All my best friends were cops. They used to wear a shirt and tie. The most they got was a bulletproof vest underneath their shirt and tie. Now they all look like they're they're going to go into uh, tunnels in uh, Pal in Gaza. Yeah, well, that, that's because just a regular cop yeah. pulling you over looks like that now. Well, that's because our government smuggled actual cocaine in. That's right. to our country to create a huge drug, as well as cheap Chinese guns. That our own government did that to. Mm -hmm. To fund their amazing adventures. That's why it's so crazy out there. <laughs> because yeah. your own government did that to you. Because you don't matter. Don't Are, you get get the message? This, this, the, I don't yeah. know what I'm yelling at. This, no, this idea uh, that somehow the people running the country care about you or care about the country, they don't. They care about their self-interested uh, players. And that goes from Bernie Sanders to Joe Biden to Mitch McConnell to AOC. It couldn't be more obvious. And who do they work for? They work for the murderous motherfuckers who don't. They want a civil war in the United States. They're foment. Yes. They're the ones fomenting a civil war in the United States. Not YouTubers. Not people like me. It's not Tim Pool up to it. It's the people that run the country. That's right. Because that's how you divide and conquer. Exactly. The Netanyahu method, as it happens, that's right. You divide and conquer. Is real popular with yeah. a lot of leaders. But. Also, I think silver lining, you said for who are they doing this for and what you were talking about, the whole industry involved, the medicine, everything. Silver lining, right? Uh, it's collapsing. Trump said it. Biden said it. This is about the military industrial uh, complex. This is jobs here. We're selling off stockpiles. Yep. And all these other states are going to be able to make those weapons. So it's it's a good industry for us. Come see us doing uh, live shows. We're going to be in Levittown, Red Bank, New Jersey, Wilmington, Delaware, Covina, California, Burbank, California, Oxnard, California, Venice, California, Palmdale, California, Omaha, Nebraska, Des Moines, Iowa, Milwaukee, and Lansing, Michigan. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for all those tickets. Thank <laughs> you.